Hey folks, welcome back to the Alan Parks Project. My name is Alan Parks and today I'm going to show you about my DIY tuba wall hangers. I looked around, I, well, I wanted to get my horns off of the floor out of the way of marauding kids and pets and just floor traffic and clumsy feet in general. And I wanted to mount them to the wall. So I did an internet search for tuba wall hangers and they're like a couple hundred dollars. And I was thinking, that's an awful lot of money. And some websites, they had tuba wall hangers, but no prices, which is rather ridiculous. So I decided I would make my own, and I'm gonna show you how you can make your own too. These probably clock in at under $40 for parts, and you just have to put it together yourself, which I'll show you how to do. You want to make sure that you mount the brackets to a wall stud, but that's very easy to do. As long as you have uh, like an electric drill driver, it makes life a lot simpler. I suppose you could do it with other tools as well. So uh, here we go. First thing we're gonna need to do is go shopping. So we're gonna head over to my local Home Depot, and I'm sure you can find these parts at any well-stocked hardware store or home center. So we're gonna go over there and see how much these things actually cost now. So field trip time. Okay, Home Depot. Home center, hardware store, dystopian hellscape, you decide. Let's see, hunting around, okay, here they are. They're right in the tool department for some reason. And here's, here's here it is. That's the bottom bracket that we're going to get. Ooh, 798 what a bargain. Is that really it? It's hard to, yes, that's it. Okay, and now the top hanger, oh boy. Um, oh, it's, it's just that one. Oh, what a mess. This, that's not it. Nope, nope. That's, uh, is this, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. That's it, yeah. Screw in utility hanger. Okay, so how much is that bad boy? Um, okay, $3.48, or you can buy it in a kit. It's just like 16 bucks if you have to get the set and you can't find it in the big pile, but there it is. Okay, we're back. We survived our trip to Home Depot, and we've got what we need assembled right here. So. Full disclosure, these are the brackets. Well, this is one of the brackets that I had on my wall already. I didn't want to go buying parts, make a whole new one for no good reason. I don't have another horn to hang up. So I'm going to use the ones I, I, uh, I already have. So I have a couple of pieces of pine. These have been finished with shellac. You can paint them. You can leave them raw or whatever. You know, these are... Uh... So they're both 18 inches long which generally studs are 16 inches apart on center. So they're 16 inches apart. So this should be able to span two different studs, one at each end. However, where I wanted to place mine wasn't the case. The stud fell right there in the middle. So that's what I ran for. And it's been perfectly sturdy so far. Now this wood is solid wood and it's a three quarter inch thick piece of wood by seven and a half, which makes it a one by eight. I know it's not really one inch by eight inches, but you know, roll with it, okay? So a couple of pieces of wood, we get our bracket, we mount our brackets to the wood. So I have this so that it's hanging down below just a little bit so that this part is hidden up behind the tuba. And I'm using these screws to hold it on. And these are, what are they, one inch, inch and a quarter? And they're actually an inch and a quarter and I pre-drill my holes using a uh, countersink bit, but you can just use a regular drill bit. I really recommend drilling pilot holes first. That way you're gonna get rid of any tendency of the wood to actually crack. And that goes for the mounting screws into the wall as well. Pre-drill those and you're gonna have a much nicer life. And so I'm gonna just put these back in the holes that I had drilled already and that they had already come out of. And I'm not gonna really sink it down too terribly hard. Okay, and use all three screws and make sure that they're seated in there really well. Ah, get in the hole. There you go. Okay, and that's one half completed. Not a difficult task. Okay, moving on to the top part of the hanger. Um, so we've got our I don't know what they call it, ladder hanger, I guess. Piece of one by six, it's narrower than the other one. Um, finished with shellac. Um, 
You're going to need to drill a hole to get that bugger through there. That's a real thick, brutal thread. So you're going to need to b drill a nice big hole. I believe that's a quarter inch hole. And you want to size your drill bit to the size of the core so that the only the threads bite into the wood. Definitely need to pre-drill this one. To make it easier to screw in, because these are so tough, I use paraffin. This is a, just an old chunk of paraffin. And you get some paraffin in the threads. And that'll make screwing it in a lot easier. If you don't have a chunk of paraffin, you can use soap. Just a bar of soap. You can just annoy somebody by carving grooves in it with that. Your pre-drilled hole and then get it started. Now this is real easy to uh, screw in because it's been screwed in there already. I just took this one apart. So you may have to get a pair of pliers or a wrench or something and get that uh, screwed around okay. Now the thing is, is, on the back, if you screw it in too far, the tip's gonna come out and you won't be able to set it flat against your wall. So you can't let that tip stick out too far. A little bit's fine because it'll just dig into the wall a little bit but that leaves a lot of threads exposed. That's kind of a drag. You could use a thicker board if you want, but that's pretty rough to do. You could use like a two by six or something. But I found that this works just fine. There's threads all the way through the wood and it holds it pretty, pretty well. And you can't really see the threads. And now they're just caked with wax. Perfect. Okay, so those are the pieces. So I've got my holes pre-drilled for, the, uh, for the, the screws into the stud. And then I've got these screws that I used, and these are two inch screws. I said three inch screws earlier, I think. These are two inch. It's plenty enough that you can get through the thickness of your board, and then a thickness of um, uh, uh, sheetrock, the wall board, and then some to sink into the stud itself. Two and a half inch screws would probably be better than this. Three inches would definitely be nice and big. Pre-drill and uh, have yourself the town. Now we gotta go look at how to hang those on the wall. So now we've got our lower hanger, which I'm gonna put on first because it's gotta match the tuba that's next to it. So in my case, I'm trying to line it up with the holes that were there already. So up against the stud and then I've pre-started the, the screws in the holes. That saves me from having to hold this up and juggle the screw, juggle the drill, all that other nonsense. Goes in nice and easy. Boom. Securely attached. Now we're going to do the top one. Okay, so in order to figure out how high above the bottom hooks, the upper hook needs to be, we need to measure from the bottom bow to the underside of the upper bow. So since it hits on the side and it's a little lower than that, I'm gonna call it, oh, I'm gonna call it 26 inches, which is just a little short, but that's okay because we want it to drop down over the top and not necessarily be snug. We want most of the weight to be resting on the bottom. And then the top hook is just to keep it from falling over, just for, for staying there. So let's go uh, attach that to the wall. Okay, so I've got this placed up here and I've measured and I've measured down from this hook down to the lower hooks. It looks like I've got 25 inches between this hook and where it's gonna rest down here. And that should be fine because we mostly want the weight to be on these lower hooks, not on the upper hooks. Upper hooks just to keep it from falling over. Okay, that's great. Let's get the horn up there now. All right, so we've got our tuba hanger mounted to the wall, nice and sturdy. Everything looks great. Get the horn up there. The trick is hook it over the top and then set it down on the lower reaches. And as you can see, there's a gap here. You know, I can fit, it's about a finger width right there. And that's fine. This hook is just to keep it upright. You know, it's not hanging from this hook. It's resting on the lower hooks. That's where your support comes. Keeps it nice and secure, looks good, and everything. So there you go. DIY wall tuba hangers. You can do it too. It just takes a little bit of effort and a couple of tools. If you don't have them, 
ask a friend. I'm sure you know somebody who's handy like that and you can get it done. So that's the video for now. Um, stay tuned for other videos as well. And I'd like to encourage you to hit like and subscribe, please. And, uh, and share this, share this video around, put it on social media. I don't care. And, uh, you know, help out fellow tuba players, save a few bucks. This ended up being, um, you know, under $10, I believe. I don't know. Uh, help them save a few dollars because this is well under $20 worth of materials. And that beats a heck out of a, over 100, right? So anyway, help a buddy, uh, help a tuba player out and spread this video around. So we'll see you next time. Once again, I'm Alan Parks. Thanks. Oh yeah. <laughs>